Wait a minute, isn't Play to Earn pretty much dead by now? Not quite, and with the whole narrative that Web3 Gaming is the next big thing, there's a fair chance that people are going to start to look at it again if it does pick up. Well, Axie Infinity is dead, for sure, and what I call the simple model of Play to Earn is hopefully buried with it. That said, there are some ways that P2P could be implemented well. And of course, there are many ways that various low effort entrepreneurs will try to reheat the same garbage and serve it to us again under a new disguise. So learning to tell the difference might well be critical to surviving 2023 without losing our feathers again. Keep watching for a breakdown of P2B, what makes sense, what doesn't, and how to avoid the scams. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Tenner, aka Swambat, and in these videos I use my 15 years of experience as a successful entrepreneur working with hundreds of tech startup founders to bring some clarity to Web3 and NFTs to help both investors and founders who see the potential of this new technology. So let's get the simple model out of the way first, since it's what most people understood by play to earn over the last couple of years. In the simple model, the game is presented as a way to earn money. You start playing with the expectation that if you're any good, you'll get revenues from it. Since the difficulty in most games is especially P2Es, is not all that hard, pretty much anyone can expect to get good at it. So that means that everyone comes in expecting to make money. There are various ways this got packaged in 2021, with the most extreme nonsense being scholarships, where you don't even play the game yourself, but just delegate the playing to a bunch of people in a poorer country, so they play the game on your behalf and earn you money passively somehow. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. Yeah, that's because this simple model is critically flawed and can never be sustainable, because maths. Ultimately, you can't create money out of thin air. If you make up a magic token, you can appear to create some kind of value out of nothing, for a while at least, but eventually the real cash that goes into the project equals the real cash that comes out. The project has dev expenses and the founders usually take a good load of money off the table too, and all the players are expecting to get money out of it too. So who's paying? Probably me. Yeah, whoever's foolish enough to think they're investing by buying assets in the game is actually funding all these cash outflows. Eventually the whole thing comes crashing down, the assets become worthless and the token goes down 95% or more. Ultimately the simple play to earn model is just a thinly disguised casino. As usual the house always wins. But so far in most P2E the house wins so hard that almost all the players lose everything. It's a really bad casino. And to make things worse, since most of those games existed only to make the casino seem more legit, most of them are not even all that much fun to play. Like Axie itself, the flagship of this wave of crypto gaming, was basically just a reheated version of countless free mobile games. So you're saying there's a better model than this? I am. And this model might well be implemented and work out in 2023. But people will still try to disguise the simple model and serve it up to us again as if it was fresh. So keep watching to the end to make sure you're not taken in. How do you suggest it should be done then? Well, the first thing that needs to be removed with the scalpel and the sledgehammer is in the name. Play to earn, stated like that, can't possibly work. And in 2022, people already started moving away from this and trying to rebrand it to play and earn. Some even went as far as to suggest the revolutionary concept of play to have fun. Mostly though, the rebranding hasn't changed much about the quality and dynamics of the games. They're still really basic and they haven't changed the reasons why people play them, basically to make money. But the kernel of the idea is not bad. A game can be designed to primarily be fun and have some kind of earning mechanic integrated into it. I can't see how, to be honest. Actually, most really successful games are already play and earn. Wait, what? World-class players in games from StarCraft to Fortnite to League of Legends compete in gaming arenas and win prizes and sponsorships that are worth a lot of money. Moreover, many people who are good at playing games and commenting about their playing already make a living from Twitch streaming, YouTube videos, TikToks and so on. They're playing and earning. Oh yeah, that's true. And MMOs like World of Warcraft have had gold farmers grinding away for a decade. Huh, I guess that's also play to earn. Yeah, as usual, the solution is already here and doesn't actually need a token in order to work. Though in some cases, maybe that can help. There's actually not that much to invent. It's more about refinement and evolution. So what clever gaming companies could do is to carefully experiment with integrating some way for top players to generate some of that revenue inside the game. This would give the gaming company more control and visibility over the money flows around their top players. But the keyword here is carefully. Games are delicately constructed dopamine traps balanced to ensure the players always feel a sense of rewards in the form of a dopamine hit when they achieve something worthwhile. 
To most people, real money is concentrated meth-infused dopamine. Introduce it into a game carelessly and you will totally wreck the dopamine balance and make what was previously a fun game into a dull grind. Then you're back into the trap of the simple model with everyone grinding away at a boring game expecting to make money from it. This applies just as much to fungible token rewards like gold in World of Warcraft as to less fungible items like Fortnite skins or League of Legends magic items. If the point of the game for most people becomes the accumulation of money, the game is going to collapse. We already have a very popular sustainable game evolved over generations that people grind to make money. It's called having a job. So that's what to look forward to in 2023. Games that are primarily about having fun, but which have some sort of earning mechanic very carefully introduced to try and capture some of the earning activity that pro gamers already engage in anyway. The two key factors are, one, the game should be fun to play even without the play and earn incentives, and two, most people should not expect to make money from playing the game. If those two things are true, a play to earn or play and earn or Web3 game can be sustainable. If either factor fails, run. Well, that seems pretty straightforward. Why do we even need this last section? Because building another bullshit casino is way easier than what I just described. So this won't stop low effort people from trying to serve you up the same old crap but dressed up in a different way. If we do get a big wave of Web3 gaming in 2023, it will probably include various forms of P2E and P&E disguised better or worse. Some of it will be deliberate by people just looking to cash in on others' gullibility and others will just not see the flaws in what they're creating before it's too late. I don't know exactly how people will go back it, of course. I imagine they'll say things about how they're building an economy or have another go at disguising the assets they're selling. Maybe it won't be land this time, but something else. Clouds, identity generators, spawn points. They'll probably call themselves Web3 games rather than P2E or something completely different. I suggest ignoring what kind of crypto gaming the company claims to be building and looking at a few simple facts. First, is the company presenting making money as a primary thing about the game? Or even if they aren't, are most people enthusiastic about the game specifically because of the earning potential? If so, it's almost certainly just reheated P2E, no matter what else they say. Easy to filter those out. Second, does the game actually seem fun? To evaluate this, of course, you should yourself be a gamer. So step out of your investor mindset for a moment and think, would I play this game if I had to pay for it and I had no chance of ever making any money from it? If not, that's another very red flag. Related to this, does the business have a clear way to generate revenues in the future? This could be via one-off payments like many indie games or via monthly subscriptions or even via selling digital add-ons like Fortnite skins. But there needs to be some kind of actual revenue generator. Moreover, unless the game is being made by an existing AAA studio and has the deep pockets to risk $100 million up front before seeing any revenue, the game should be able to start making money long before it has millions of users. Most games won't get there. With these three lines of inquiry, we should be able to filter out most of the disguised simple model P2E games and avoid investing in them. Of course, identifying that the business is viable is not quite enough. And if you're investing via NFTs, it's essential that you also figure out why the NFT that you buy is likely to go up in value if the game is successful. With games, you'll also have the added complexity of making sure that the NFT doesn't break the fun of the game. But as a starting point, you might want to watch this video that I made earlier about figuring out that value link. GM and good luck.